I've heard a lot of stories. I've heard that you used to be like, you know, middle class and very, very beautiful here. And then all of a sudden it just, you know, went down. Well, the vision for this house has always been, uh, this is our, our outreach, or is this neighborhood. We no longer do, you know, out of state or out of the country or anything like that. We just focus all of our resources to this neighborhood. So when we heard about this plan, it was good to know that, you know, more help was coming. And so we just jumped on it right away because we knew we wanted to be involved in the whole process. It's actually our third neighborhood plan. So we kicked it off with a consultant, which is the first time we've used a consultant um, through this planning process. So we're about halfway through the plan now since starting in January and hope to have it adopted by February of next year. This one's probably been the most successful. From my understanding, we've had over 100 at multiple public meetings. So. I was really impressed with that turnout. I didn't know it was gonna be, you know, that big. The, the attendance was impressive. Like that was something that really surprised me. Um, so people are clearly like very engaged and seem to be committed to um, the planning process. It's, it's a 12 plus month process that we go through. Um, we work with an advisory committee. Uh, we have around 20 or so that uh, signed up to get more involved from our first public kickoff meeting. So we meet with them monthly uh, to go through the planning process. There's a lot of data on the front end. We look at a lot of a lot of the map mapping that we use uh, for the demographics, for the, the economy. We look at the, the median income level. We look at the age of the, the neighborhood, um, the value of the home. So we really look at all that information to kind of get a feel for where it is today so we can see how it improves or changes in the future. Um, but it was a pretty young neighborhood uh, compared to the city overall. Um, housing values are, are less here than overall. So you can see that it's, it's been declining. They seem to still be very concerned with the, the issue of housing, the condition of the building stock. A lot of people just, you know, right out say there's drugs, there's, you know, a lot of uh, loose animals, um, abandoned houses, you know, houses are just need to be turned down, dirty alleys. Traffic accidents is an issue. Uh, speed of the traffic that comes through the, the corridors through San Jacinto are, are some of the things they'd like to see addressed. Also, uh, homeless population and some of these abandoned houses being used by uh, vagrants that could maybe start a fire and uh, damage the damage the house if they're in there uh, overnight. Uh, part of this process, we actually have regular meetings with our departments um, to learn more what their process is, what they want to see uh, changed. If there's codes we can change, is it staffing? Um, is it just getting more information out to the community on how to report those issues? But there is, of course, a process that goes along with it. If somebody has a a house that's in a poor condition, they have uh, a chance to bring it up to code, bring it up to where it needs to be. So it's a lot of uh, explaining what the process is so they have an understanding of what it takes to actually address those issues. As housing houses age, um, if they're not taken care of, they do get to a point that can you save them or can you not, and what amount of money needs to be invested. Um, and it's also just the neighborhood as a whole, what, what's that investment look like for the investors that own multiple houses? Can they continue to put the money into it and regain what they're putting into it? Is it worth the investment to continue? So it's, it's really a balance that you want to be able to continue to, to grow that neighborhood and see that reinvestment, but ultimately they're only going to put in what they know they can get their profit back. So it's kind of a balancing act um, to try and bring the neighborhood up as a whole. We've had discussions with the, the larger property owners and it's and they'll tell you right up there right right in the beginning of the conversation they don't take care of the properties necessarily what somebody is, that's living there on a day-to-day -day basis, a homeowner that owns a property, they may check on the property once a month or something to make sure it's getting mowed, but it's not really that pride of ownership that you might see from somebody that uh, owns a property and is living there. So having that turnover of tenants and renters um, can have an impact on the neighborhood. Alleys are another big concern that they'd like to see addressed as far as just the, the legal dumping activity that we see. Um, they're also big into the committees showing a big interest in sustainability um, and practices as far as um, drainage and runoff and, and how we can address some of those issues. Community gardens has come up quite a bit too. Uh, they actually have one here locally with uh, Square Mile that's done their uh, urban farming. So they like to see more of that as well, just to continue to grow um, 
grow their local businesses too. They don't want to be a have chains come in and, and kind of take over. They want to continue that local business entrepreneurship that you've seen on Route 66. Well, I think addressing the community's concerns about um, public safety really is the first step. I think that um, the, the perception has to start to change in this neighborhood. That has to be where we start. Um, and then once um, we start to see some progress in those areas. I think that the other um, the other opportunities that the neighborhood has identified that they want um, will be much easier to achieve. There is a lot of, like I said, a lot of concerns from the community. And I think now we're at a point where like, okay, we know what's wrong. Um, but now I'm excited to see what the next step is. Like I said, this is my first time doing anything. so. Um, I'm just showing up and trying to make anything possible. They want to see um, Route 66 continue to um, be a highlight of the neighborhood as far as the, the character and the uniqueness about it. Um, one thing around that is parking. Uh, it's kind of limited as far as parking goes, so they'd like to see uh, that address, which is part code requirements, part what we do with an existing neighborhood that has limited parking. That's why you plan, um, is you have to look comprehensively at the area. Um, in commercial districts, often you have to have some sort of shared parking. Um, so, you know, identifying uh, potential lots that um, would make sense for a shared parking program, signage, again, education, directing people to those public lots um, can really go a long ways. This is one of the most interesting stretches of Route 66 that I've ever been on. Um, I think the like the integrity of the building style, I love the scale um, of these buildings. I just think it's a really interesting um, district architecturally and of course the history is so rich and um, really could be um, you know we we could be one of those case studies or best practices that um, preservationists across the country are pointing to as far as um, preserving Route 66 and having it be a, a not just a tourist destination but also a district that locals love and um, frequent. So jobs in the neighborhood, how would you mm -hmm. even begin to look at that? Um, part of this one, we've actually included a little bit to the east of San Jacinto, not your more traditional San Jacinto uh, area, that would possibly have some opportunities, some more uh, industry, heavy commercial type uses that could benefit the neighborhood. Um, but you're right, uh, Route 66 is pretty much uh, the way it is, so it's going to be working um, Maybe it's a, a different zoning district that allows more mixed uses versus what they have now that allows more opportunity of a less parking parking requirements or something to be more flexible to allow allow for that redevelopment to occur and allow those businesses to, to thrive in the neighborhood. How far east are we talking about? It's it's heading towards downtown, but it's kind of that area that's not really downtown, not really San Jacinto. So it was a it was important as through this planning process to, to try and capture a good area that made sense for the neighborhood plan area. It also matches up with the school district's boundary as far as which ones go to the San Jacinto school. So it made sense. There's a lot of history uh, in San Jacinto. So we spent a lot of time talking about historic Route 66 and just um, where the neighborhood's been and what it's gone through. Um, this hasn't really been their first planning process. They've shared with us documents from the past uh, 50, 60 years that they they go through these different uh, iterations of trying to improve the community. So this is our latest effort and hopefully we'll be able to make a difference and work on some of the things they'd like to see. But there's a lot of passionate folks in this neighborhood and a lot of people that want to see it um, be revived. For me, it's not if it's just when um, for this neighborhood. And so um, I think that, you know, starting from the commercial core and co kind of working out um, is really, um, you know, sort of the, the, the starting point for the neighborhood. What are you learning? Well, um, that this, the, the people do have a voice. I mean, you know, these community meetings, uh, for the people that show up, you see the passion that is really in this neighborhood still. I've learned that uh, we can do this, you know, this can be possible to revitalize this communi community. Um, 
but it's going to take everybody. Well, it's really a, it's got short, medium, and long range goals that they'll work on, but it's really a 20, 20 year plan as far as their vision of what they want to see Sanderson look like in 20 years. One of the reasons I came here is because of Route 66. I think that that is just an incredible asset for Amarillo and um, underutilized. And so I think um, with that corridor running through this neighborhood, um, I think that is such an asset to build off of. But I see a lot of potential in this neighborhood. There's a lot of passionate people um, that care, still care about this community. And so I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of bright future.